This is Frances Flynn Torson from No Blogger Left Behind with the latest installment in our Best of No Blogger Left Behind video series. Today we're joined by Kevin Tomlinson in Miami. Kevin is the Vice President of One Sotheby's International Real Estate in Miami. He sells luxury real estate and he is ranked in the top one half of 1% of all real estate agents in the country. Kevin is a superstar and Kevin is a superb blogger. Kevin gets a lot of attention in the press. I know a lot of agents who ask, you know, how does he do that? How does he get all of that, all of that press attention? And to tell you the truth, I don't know a single agent or a single real estate blogger anywhere who gets the type of press attention he gets or the quality of press attention, uh, you know, all over the country. Newspapers, online uh, media, and, and, and television. It's absolutely amazing. So I'm very, very happy because Kevin joined me and Denise Lonis for an interview to talk about that. Kevin and Denise actually are both finalists this year uh, in 2011 in the Inman, 1000, Inman 100 Most Influential People in Real Estate. Um, this is a very, very special video segment in our series, and I'm very, very happy about it. Um, here are Kevin Tomlinson and Denise Lonis talking about blogging and social media. This is great stuff. Enjoy. Welcome. Well, good morning, everyone. I am so thrilled, I have to tell you. This is Denise Lonis, and I'm so thrilled this morning that we have First of all, one of my favorite people in real estate, uh, but the premier, the most awesome blogger in the country. And Kevin, good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. How is the weather down in Miami, first of all? Uh, it's a little, yeah, the weather really hasn't changed. It's, it's a little cloudy, but it's like 75. It's, it's, it's nice, I guess. <laughs> well, Kevin, considering that I'm up in the Pacific Northwest and that uh, it's been raining and freezing cold, I'm very jealous. So, first of all, welcome and thank you for spending the time with us this morning. I'm so excited because having an opportunity to ask you a whole bunch of questions about your blog and find out what you've been doing, how you've been doing it, and for you to just kind of, you know, open up and give us kind of the inside scoop, behind the scenes look at your world in blogging, uh, we're very, very excited. So the first thing that I would love you to share with everyone is just tell us a little bit about, you know, when did you start blogging and what made you decide that blogging was something that you wanted to do? Well, late in 2006, I was reading um, a, a bunch of stuff about blogging and I knew that I wanted to blog, so I had this yellow file uh, this manila folder around my, uh, you know, that I would sort of carry from office to home with me with blogging articles and whatnot. And so this was in, you know, mid to early 2006, and I knew that I needed to start blogging. So then uh, on March 5th of 2007, Inman had some sort of like bloggers, audio conference call. They didn't have webinars back, back in that, those days. Um, and uh, Ardell was on there, and I think uh, Joe Ferrara was on there, and uh, a bunch of other, uh, you know, muckety-mucks at that point, which I can't really even remember who was on there but Joe Ferrara and, and Ardell. So, as I was sitting there and listening to this conference call, I decided that I wanted um, Ardell to help me with blogging, and then that that at at any cost she would be helping me. Like I was determined to make Ardell help me. So. Um, as this conference call was going on, I'll go through this very quickly. I was emailing her. I was like, you know, I looked her up in Google, whatever, found out whatever, found her email address, and I'm bombarding her with emails, thinking that maybe she'd be at her computer. But no, of course, she was, you know, at a studio somewhere or something. And um, yeah. so later on that day, I think she spoke to me via email, and she said, well, I'll talk to you, but I won't talk to you via phone. She goes, I'll only do it via email. I was like, well, she's a real work, piece of work. <laughs> so uh, 
we started talking, whatever. We talked that day, actually, and she said to me, um, uh, I said something like, uh, I used a, a, a curse word, which I'm very well known for. Uh, I said, you know, when I come out of the gate blogging, there's so many people in my market that sort of eyeball what I do that there'll be no bloggers. And then the moment I start blogging, there'll be 15 bloggers. So I have to come out of the gate very well trained. And I called my competition a curse word. And that sort of endeared her to me. And then she called me back five minutes later and asked me if I wanted to be her mentee uh, in the Project Blogger competition that Active Rain was just starting at that point. And I said, yeah, I didn't even know what Active Rain was. And I think the competition had already started that day, and I had yet to become a member of Active Rain. So that's how I got into it and, and you know, the whole – uh, groundwork of it all for me. Wow. So you started back, you know, we're now going on almost six years. Yes. So a lot has probably changed for you in six years, but maybe tell all of our listeners a little bit about the steps that you took at that point. So now step one is you joined Active Rain. Now you're actively involved with Ardell in this project blogger competition. What happened? What are the steps that you had to take? Well, first we had to um, – we blogged mainly on Active Rain, and I, I like Active Rain for, you know, a lot of bloggers when they get all, you know, hoity-toity, they sort of like leave Active Rain. But I think Active Rain is an excellent resource. Um, I don't blog much on Active Rain just because I have so much to do. But um, we blogged. The competition took place on Active Rain, and later in the competition it took place, we had to set up our own blogs as well and blog on our blogs later in the comp competition. So um, uh, we had to set up – I set up a WordPress blog and uh, – went through those steps and Ardell helped coaching me about content and we we needed to get a lot of content up basically is what where we were starting and I had to learn to write and I had to hear a lot of things like your blogging voice and and you know and I had to learn SEO and I had to learn everything all that stuff we know now I learned in like two days <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I was like, okay, okay, okay. I had to learn who all the players were, who all the blah, blah, blah. But we set up my blog, and we set up my Active Rain blog. And, uh, you know, uh, that's pretty much it at the very early beginning. We just set up my WordPress blog, which is – So what, yeah, that, one, of the things that you, one of the things you talked about, Kevin, is you talked about, you know, you had to learn to write. And I know that for a lot of real estate agents – one of the main reasons they do not blog is because they have a fear of writing. Also, you talked about having to learn SEO, and it just sounds like this was a really, um, you know, you didn't have time to, you know, spend too much time on research. You actually did a lot of the doing. But the thing that you said was you had to find your blogging voice. And uh, I know that Fran and I talk about that specifically a lot in No Blogger Left Behind because I think it's really important to have a voice and to let people know who you are and to let them know your personality, and you have a very, very um, unique, special, spectacular personality that I think that that's, you know, a big part of what has made your blog successful because people are going to come there and they're going to want to come back to it because of your voice. So tell us a little bit about how you found your blogging voice. Well, it's really funny. Um, being in the swirl of Project Blogger and, you know, everybody who was anybody was a judge one week or another and everybody, there was a lot of attention paid to us. And I know Fran was, you know, uh, Fran was a coach as well, correct, Fran? 
Yes, I was the coach. Was. Actually, won. Actually, we won. Mary and I. Ran right, right. With Mary Pope. Team. Right, right. Okay. Yep. With with Mary Pope. So, anyways, um, there was a lot, the best of the best. They had their eyes on us all the time. So uh, it, it was a lot of it was a lot of pressure, and. We one day we would have a one week would we would have a good week the next week we would have the next so it was very intimidating to get back to your question it was very intimidating to be in those uh, that arena so there was no finding my voice at that point none whatsoever uh-uh. because um, you know I was just intimidated as the years went on and you know you sort of do it on a Friday night. And you know you you have a, a libation or a the good TV show, and you write a blog post. It's it, it then your voice comes out, and you know when all the cameras go away, it, it's it's it takes time for your voice to come out. It doesn't it doesn't you you have to be comfortable with all of the you know everything before your voice comes out, and it takes time. It just doesn't happen right away. Well, one so of the things it took, that it, it, it took me it took me about a good year year and a half for my voice to come out, and I'm and I'm sure many many people regret that my voice exists. <laughs> <laughs> but the whole idea of blogging is to find an audience and to deliver great content to that audience, and you're not going to please everyone. That is for sure. When you blog. You know, you're going to – people can choose to come to your blog. They can choose to return to your blog. And if they love your voice, they're going to come back. If they don't, then they can go and uh, spend time on other blogs. So, uh, But you do have a very strong voice, Kevin, and you have had a lot of, um, you know, impact in the blogging world, so to speak. But let's talk a little bit about your – blog and blogs today because you have, uh, I mean, there's no doubt that you have uh, just the most incredible blog. So tell us a little bit about your blog today and tell us a little bit about how you manage that blog, how you manage your time around blogging. Okay, well, I, um, well, let me start this out by saying I was, uh, you know, via the Project Blogger experience and ha- knowing the people that I know um, now uh, and the, the people that I speak with now who are in my quote-unquote inner circle like Fran, um, you know, even people that aren't around anymore, you know, Lori Manny, uh, Joe Ferrara, uh, God, I sound like an old guy now, and it's so sad that those people aren't with us anymore because they really, uh, you know, and Ardell, of course, I can't leave out Ardell. Um, Ardell was, you know, obviously we were a good match. Uh, we both sort of have the same take on, you know, things. So we worked very well together. So it was easy for me to to eventually find my voice because we were in the no BS zone together. But my blog now, uh, I again, I had the benefit of all these great people to give me advice or, you know, you pick up little nuggets here, or little nuggets there. And uh, um, where, where did I want to go with that? Uh, is for example, with my blog, people ask me questions like, "How many times a week do you blog?" or "How many blog posts?" "How many this?" I'm like, I don't think of any of that. I don't think of any of that. I just, when I have something to say that I feel is important, I I I then write a post. The only thing I want to tell everybody out there, this is my big pet peeve, and I would love this will be my my soapbox for four seconds. When you write a blog, a blog is the medium, much like a magazine. An article is a post, much like an article inside a magazine. So when people compliment a person's blog, they're complimenting the body of work. If you mean to compliment their post, say post. It's a big pet peeve of mine. So um, I'm glad I got that off my chest. 
so like if I don't have anything to write about, I don't write. I don't write. I don't feel that there's pressure on me to write. I my blog I speak to and I have very specific people that I speak to and I have a very specific strategy for my blog. My people who read my blog are, are bankers, are hedge fund people, are uh CEOs, are people that get numbers. I don't write about community things. I don't write about, you know, haunted houses or anything like that. It's just not something I would do well. But I, what I do well is, is I feel like I'm a good conduit of great information. And that's what my blog is about. It's not about community happenings. It's about uh, great information on the local real estate market. I don't do, you know, fluffy stuff. I just do, um, sometimes I don't blog a lot. Like, for example, Rudy from uh, Truly and Now Welcome Matt he sent me a message the other day. He's like, Kevin, are you still blogging? And I'm like, yeah, I'm still blogging. But, you know, I, I hadn't blogged in a long, long time because of my, I moved companies and, you know, I'm busy and stuff like that. And I didn't, I didn't feel any guilt. I mean, I know optimal, optimally I should have been blogging and putting out, you know, consistent content and Google likes that and all of that. And I know those rules, consistency, and it's, it's, it's all good. But, you know, I need to have a life too. And if I can't blog, I just can't blog. And I don't, and I don't worry about it if I can't blog. So well, the, the uh, thing I put that a po- you – I was just going to say, Kevin, the thing that you just mentioned about having great information, you know, I think every person who decides that they are going to blog has to decide for them and their market what is relevant. And in your marketplace, you know, knowing who you're going to speak to, and as you said, the bankers and the CEOs and people that get numbers, and, you know, your blogging and your content is relevant to them. So you talk about having this audience and – You know, some people do blog a couple times a week. Some people blog consistently every week. What's interesting is that although you don't have a specific um, criteria for that, it's more based on what, you know, when you have something to say, you say it. I think that uh, in a way that's worked very, very well for you because clearly you have a very, very successful blog. So the content, the information that you are providing is very relevant and there are agents out there that are blogging about haunted houses you know Fran and I talked to Mary Povandi and wow she's had you know just some incredible I mean when you listen to her interview uh, because she does talk about uh, haunted houses and she's got her little area that is a niche for her and there are agents that are talking about just community happenings but the key is is that you're out there blogging and you know in your marketplace now how many other agents are blogging and, you know, how many other agents are trying to catch up, so to speak. Now, your blog, Kevin, tell us a little bit about what does somebody, uh, what would I expect to see? I, I love your blog. I've been to it many, many times. But what would your consumer, you know, your buyers and sellers expect to get out of your blog? Why are they going to go to your blog? Because what the inf- – not only are most – okay, I will tell you the difference of my blog, and that's a great question, and, and this is what I try to do, and this is actually what I pride myself on. Any hoo-ha can go to the MLS and put up MLS stats. And when I read those blogs from those hoo-hahs who are trying to compete with me, I sort of kind of laugh. I'm like, <laughs> and they're just like, they go to the MLS and they're like, uh, X, you know, a monthly market update. You know, market updates are the best. They're the most boring. They're the hardest to write. You get the least fanfare on them, but ultimately they're the basis of good content for a real estate blog. But it's how I do my market updates. You have to get the numbers, you have to process the numbers, and you have to um, show 
you know, you have to highlight the what's relevant and show it and do a compare and contrast and by my opinion show what it means to the consumer. Not say there's thirty pending sales this month and there's forty pending you know, there's forty closed units this month at five hundred and forty two dollars a square foot. Well, if you don't have any other information to compare and contrast that to it means nothing to the reader. So what I do, and I know I do it very well because I take great pains to do so, is to put it in some sort of context as to where, where it me, what this means. Okay, this condo just sold for $3,700 a square foot. What does that mean? And so, but most brokers stop, or most agents stop at, wow, this condo sold at $3,700 a square foot. Period. End of story. Blog. Woo! Pretty pictures, and it, you're done. You're done. Yeah, let me jump in for a second. That that condo that sold us thirty seven hundred dollars a square foot is a very very interesting piece of market data. But did that just get you the most unbelievable traffic? I mean, you were you were picked up. Your blog post was picked up by the Drudge Report, which is one of the most highly trafficked websites in the country. I mean, you get, I mean you've been on television, you've been on Miami World, you've been on the New York Times. But the Drudge Report, you, your market report was picked up by the Drudge Report. Tell me a little bit, tell us a little bit about the traffic that happened and, and, and what happened around that. I mean, that was a, you know, a market report on steroids. And tell us also a little bit about that property and the flavor of the property along that. Okay, well, I'll start off with the property. The property is probably the most important property on the e most important condominium property on the eastern seaboard on the ocean. Um, I wouldn't call any. Uh, they don't really have high rises up north on the ocean, so I would say it's probably the most important condominium on the ocean on the eastern seaboard. So. And it was owned by former Netscape founder Jim Clark, so it had some, you know, uh, provenance to it, and it was also very important and a very expensive property, and it was obviously going to be the most expensive property. So when that sold, I knew that my clients and my readers would be very interested in that. So. Uh, fortunately, my company sold it, so I had the inside scoop on it, and I was up at 4 in the morning uh, putting together a blog post because I wanted it to be in everybody's box at 8 in the morning when it, you know, the feeds went out. So, <clears throat> uh, so all of a sudden, somebody tells me uh, about 10 o'clock that I'm on the Drudge Report. So this is my second time of being on the Drudge Report. I think one was one other time was for being, uh, I mentioned something on Shaq's house. I sort of, what's great about blogging, what I love about blogging is traditional media is so slow. I mean, and, and news happens fast now. So when big news happens, the blogs are going to report it. Because the, the 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 newspapers just you know it's tomorrow, so uh, the Drudge picked it up, and then every uh, if, if it's news on Drudge, it's news to everybody else. So all the newsrooms read Drudge. So then it got picked up like the Daily Mail in the UK, blah blah blah. It got picked up everywhere. And I think the first day it was the first full day it was up. I had eighty thousand people to my blog. Uh, it was up for two full days. the The second day, I had forty thousand, and the third day, I had um, fifteen hundred, and then the day after that, I had thirteen hundred. So a lot of people over 100,000, way over 100,000 just from that. Um, and they're still rolling in backlinks from other media. But it's pretty exciting because, uh, you know, you have to make sure that your blog stays up because once Drudge, Drudge is known to crash servers. So if he crashes your server, he'll take your link off, and that's it. You know, he's moved on.
So uh, I had to, you know, it's a pretty tedious situation where I had to stay, you know, basically on the phone for a couple hours with my web people and making sure that everything stays up. Because they were like, you know, it's going down, it's weak, it's it's, it's nerve-wracking day. But, um, yeah, it's and I, I attribute it to um, good content first. I don't. I could have been lazy and I could have said, well, I'll write it at 8 o'clock in the morning or if I'll write it at 10 o'clock in the morning. But by then, you know, press releases from the real estate firms would have gone out. Um, everything else, I could have been lazy, but I didn't want to be lazy and that's not who I am. I got up and I did a blog post and I was first out of the gate with it. So I was basically the source of the information, this really record-breaking information, and that was a success. Basically, the success was me showing up. You know, it's not that hard. But you also showing up first, and that's the key. But, Kevin, the point that you make that I really want listeners to get, and I think this is the most important thing that – you said, which I completely concur with, is that you can't just post MLS stats, have the, uh, uh, you know, the same monthly market update that everyone else has and expect people to get excited about your blog because you know, having the information is one thing, but when the consumer goes to a blog, they want to hear, so what does that mean to me? Why should I care that there are exactly. 40 new pendings? Why should I care that the price per square foot has changed? Why should I care that uh, the inventory has dropped or increased? What does that matter? And I think, you know, it's so important that um, agents understand that you need to interpret the numbers. You need to interpret the information and have your take on it and your voice in it because numbers and facts on their own are fine, but that doesn't bring – the blog to life and one of the things that you do so well is that you take the numbers and the facts and you say okay here's the facts here's the numbers um, here's why it matters to you here's why it's relevant uh, here's how I feel about this and here's what you need to know about this for you and that's really uh, I think been a huge part of your success is that you're not afraid to take the numbers and you're also not afraid to tackle them and have a view on them. And I think that that's one of the things that I see on so many real estate blogs is that age, real estate agents are playing it safe, right? And it's safe to just list what the MLS has to say. But consumers don't want just MLS information. They're hiring the agent because they want to hear what the agent has to say. Because if I'm going to hire an agent in Miami, I want to know that my agent knows that market inside and out and has something to say about that market and has uh, an opinion about the market and also understands how the changing numbers affect me, the buyer, or the seller. So I think that what you've done a phenomenal job of doing is having a voice and interpreting the information. You are the interpreter, and that's what I find so great about your blog is I can go there and I know I'm going to get, I'm going to get the facts, and you come across as – a market expert and people that are market experts get hired clearly you know I mean Kevin you're a very very successful agent you're extremely busy that's working right and now tell me a little bit about I want to talk about this you have mentioned a lot of famous people and celebrities on your site, and I know Shaq was one of them uh, let's talk a little bit about these celebrities that you've mentioned I just I want to hear the celebrity news well, I mean, it's just a, 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 you know, the celebrity factor is just a part of our market. It's to me, it's no, it's just a part of our market. It, I, it's not, it's not all that exciting to me, only because I'm probably used to it. Um, you know, I've I've heard that Beyonce and Jay Z are down here house hunting. Uh, you know, I've shown up to show a house and it was Janet Jackson uh, you know there's just a lot of it Paul Schaefer from David Letterman lives at the continuum he's got a condo right back here I mean it's just you know not, I mean I showed David Caruso places it's just eh, it's just part of the, the market I mean 
it's just part of the market. They're down here all the time. I mean, it's, the celebrities are the – here's the end. The celebrities are the people that we look past. They just want to run for a week or two. You know, we want the, those CEOs. You know, I've sold a lot of people stuff from software and tech from Seattle. I want the people with the big money. And the real people with the real big money, the money that it takes to live in these condos and these houses, celebrities don't have that kind of money. The um, people that you've never heard their names who've started companies who started like contact software, contacts for your eyes, that type of money can afford these properties. So it's we have the celebrity factor down here, but it's 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 not something really fun the the billionaires are fun like i took out i took out a man who started the hedge fund in the 60s that's um that that to me excited me i mean we're talking billionaire that was and exciting. that's your market started, right kevin i mean you talk about writing your blog for these you know as you said bankers hedge fund managers ceos that's your market, and you can see that you're really passionate about those type of people. Now, uh, I, w I know that people have asked me this question, and I want to ask this question to you because I think it's, you know, a lot of times agents want to know the how-to of things. And, you know, what are you outsourcing? What are you doing yourself? Obviously, you're writing your content yourself, but what are you outsourcing? Are you outsourcing the design? Are you out I mean, what are the things that you outsource? What are the things that you do yourself? Well, the design, I don't do anything with my blog. I mean, my, 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 you know, Dacno does all my, all my web and, and, and blog stuff. I don't, you know, I know there's a lot of agents and I watch the boards and I watch the Facebook groups and I watch the thing, uh, people who get into the, the, you know, the WordPress groups and stuff like that. Though it's fun and I sort of miss the camaraderie of hanging out with my peeps and chit-chatting about the, the new plug-in or this or that, I don't have time for that because I'm a real estate agent. And so I outsource anything that has to do – that doesn't do with my core business of either real estate. And I write my blogs. I pop into the back end. I write my blogs. and But everything else is out. I don't do any web or technical stuff myself. I refuse. I'm, that's not my job. Well, I'm really, really happy to hear you say that because one of the main reasons that agents are not blogging today is because they go online and they, let's say they get involved in one of these, you know, groups. And what they're here, or they're, let's say they're on Facebook and they're in a fa on a Facebook group and they're trying to learn about blogging. What Unfortunately, what they're hearing is that you have to learn it all, you have to do it all. And what I love about what you've done with your blog is that you have made a decision that you're going to do what you do best, which is sell real estate, interpret the market, and speak to people who want to buy and sell real estate in Miami. And then you get out there and you sell real estate. Um, your job is not – you're not a full-time blogger, and you're not – um, you know, pretending that you're going to do it all. What you're doing is you're doing what you do best and you're letting the other experts um, do that. So that, you know, I think that that really speaks a lot to who you are as an agent. And that's, uh, that is another reason, Kevin, why I believe your blog has been so successful is because when people do come to your blog, they're getting that relevant information and they're not getting the sense that, you know, every Tuesday morning at, you know, 7 o'clock uh, Eastern time, you know, the new blog comes up because you're out busy in the marketplace. So now why don't we talk a little bit about, you know, things like mistakes that you've made that you would, you know, want to give people advice to not do these things because uh, it could be a mistake. So for our new bloggers, for our bloggers that have been around a while, uh, I know personally I would love to hear about your mistakes, not just the successes. I want to hear about the failures. So kind of tell us your, your, a little bit about your mistakes and the failures you've had with your blog. I guess I wouldn't consider um, – I don't know. I, I consider myself pretty much perfect, so I don't think that I've ever made a mistake. <laughs> but, but, but going back and trying to think of a mistake that I made uh, – think of a mistake. Do you guys – I mean, I mean, 
I, let's let's just let me tweak that question a little bit, and we could therefore get a little bit more of an answer just to give, you know, <laughs> blog is a, a blog is considered social media, correct? Yes. <laughs> It is. I know exactly what you're going to say, Kevin. I know what you're going to say. Uh, maybe I better ask this question. Any mistakes <laughs> that you've made with social yes. media and any mistakes you've made specifically on your South Beach condo blog? Okay, the only mistake that I can say that I've ever made on my South Beach condo blog was that I've not posted enough. I mean, I keep my South Beach condo blog strictly business. If you look at it, I think Ardell posted one little funny thing, but it's really hardcore business. I, I'm not up there blabbering about blabber, you know, this community. I'm not blab blathering on my yeah. blog. So it's, 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 I, it's a numbers thing. So I'm not, I don't think I've really made any mistakes. The only mistake that I could say if I had to make say one would be that I should post more only for the benefit of the search engine results. Got it. So, social okay. media? So tell us. Yeah, social media. <laughs> sure, if you want to share with us what you think. Um, have you ever made a mistake with social media? We'd love to hear that. Have I ever, ever, have I ever made any mistakes on social media? Of course. Oh my God, I live for them. They're great. Um, they're great. I mean, what, what, what's great about Twitter is it's so, it's like ephemeral. It's just like, yeah, whenever, whenever I make a mistake, it just like, you know, it vaporizes right away. It's like, unless you get the RE.net you know, goons, uh, you know, taking screenshots, which of course, everything I do, I expect them to be taking a screenshot, but um, I don't really care. Um, but I'll say things that are inappropriate, but what's good about my social media is I have a different social media strategy than anyone would suspect. My social media strategy is much different probably than any others. So uh, I don't have any clients of mine. They're not following me on Twitter. Uh, they don't even know what Twitter is or Facebook for that matter. So, and actually on my Facebook, I changed my, my last name. You won't find me as Kevin Tomlinson on Facebook. So you would find me as Kevin, my middle name on Facebook because I want to have a, I don't want everything I do to be related to my business. And I don't want to look like one of those I want to have fun. Uh, you know, I want to have fun on my Facebook and, and talk to my peeps and not have to worry about maybe there's a client out there watching me. That uh, I'm like a celebrity. I need my personal space. So <laughs> You certainly are like a celebrity. I will tell you, in the real estate world, you are a celebrity. And, and Kevin, one of my favorites, by the way. Uh, I do want to talk. There's a couple more questions I want to ask you because I've got you here and I – I do want to say I really like your um, philosophy of how you have really separated your blog and social media. And, uh, you know, I agree when I look at your blog, I don't think uh, that I can see a mistake you've made. Um, I would just, I'll take more. I'll always take more of, of your content. Of all of the posts that you have, um, of anything that you've ever written and that you've posted, what was your personal favorite and then what was the one that got the, we know about the you know the uh, you know South Beach penthouse and you know the record breaking sale the record setting twenty one point yeah, five million dollars sale we know about that one but what's your favorite? Oh my God! You have you seen it? <laughs> yes. Okay, so it's that's my favorite too. Um, it's I wrote it as my last post. And I didn't know that it was going to be so scandalous because I live down here in South Beach. So this is Sodom and Gomorrah down here. And I, right. you know, what, what we see, what, it's just like Vegas. What goes on here, you know, stays here, whatever they say. But it's like, you know, naked people running around. It's no big thing. Madonna, blah, blah, blah. No big thing. So I wrote my very last blog post on everybody was talking about community and, you know, blah, 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 blah. So I figured I would do something on South Beach. So I wrote a post 
um, at the very end of Project Blogger, and it was my last inclusion into the Project Blogger um, contest, is, is South Beach really that fabulous, is my favorite post. And I put a naked picture of Madonna in there. And I didn't think it was scandalous, but I think the whole RE.net choked. And I think that they all died. It was just it was from her sex book. And it chronicles, you know, South Beach, just to give you a little bit of background, when I used to come here in 1988, it was like a dilapidated um, uh, ghetto. It was ghetto. It wasn't what it is today. And, it, you know, Gianni Versace, Madonna, and everybody were coming down here, and the whole fashion industry was coming down here because of the architecture, and it was like the cool place to be where the cool people only knew it was cool. So um, I chronicled some of the, the, the olden days and the things that we used to do back in the day, and that was my favorite post. And, you know, it's still, well, up until the Satai post, it was my most most read post ever. Wow. Wow. So there's a naked picture of Madonna on my blog post somewhere, on my blog. <laughs> so listeners, go find it. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Is, South Beach real, is South Beach really that fabulous? You'll find it. Not safe for work. So tell us a little bit now about – your because you do do a lot of interpreting on your site in terms of the numbers and you've got a strong voice around that uh, tell us just a little bit about your philosophy around your content you know the things that you will do the things that you just don't touch content you're just not interested in putting on your blog mm. that's a good question content i'm not um Con okay, content that they can get other places, I won't put on my blog. Like if you, you know, the the cultural events calendar. I don't want somebody coming to my blog for, you know, cultural events uh, information. I only want people coming to my blog who are interested in real estate Um information. So I won't do like cultural events. I won't do the new park opening or the new Betsy Boop, you know, truffle shop opening up on Main Street. I don't do any of that crap. Oh, sorry. Um, you can bleep that out. Um, I, I, <laughs> I don't think I, so. We, we're not going to bleep that out. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, you know, I just don't do that. It should, it, it, I'll tell you what, it doesn't it doesn't – I don't feel it, so I won't do it. I feel, you know, numbers and this Miami and Miami Beach is such a dynamic real estate market. And if I'm a real estate blogger, it only makes sense for me to to write upon this dynamic marketing, the dynam blah, 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 the dynamic market and how it's up. You know, it was the first to go down. It was the first to come up. I mean, we have no inventory here, um, and people like to know that. And, you know, I have now, through my blogging, I have great contacts with national media, uh, international media, national media, local media, and they all call me, and that's basically where my uh, – the true success of my blog, the launching pad for my the success of my blog is having good content, and then the media uses me as a source. So what would you say, um, Kevin, for people that are listening that think you cannot make money blogging, what do you have to say to them? Oh, well, you have to. I mean, you want to do anything that is Google is God. I don't care what anybody says. I know it. Everybody knows it. Google is God. You need to put content into Google because whether or not, you know, social media, that's another conversation, but you need to put uh, content on your blog for people to find you and 
the more most relevant the more relevant it is to what you do the better so if an, if somebody that was thinking about blogging were to ask you Kevin you know and I don't need we don't need specifics we don't want you to divulge your private I'll financial you information at all you know what what amount of your business do you think comes from or has come from blogging all of it because wow. people learn up a, a, people learn about their agents you know like I was given a 22 million, not was given, not this listing, but I was given a $22 million listing at another building. Um, but of course, like any smart person, in it, they're going to go to Google and check you out. So ultimately, my blog and my website, um, they all go to my blog because they all mention my blog. Oh, I read, I read your blog. I've read your blog. Um, and you seem like to be a very analytical guy. And these are the comments I get all the time. You seem to be a very analytical guy. You seem to know the market very well, blah, blah, blah. And that is like gold. When someone believes in you when they've never met you, it's gold. I mean, um, and for someone starting out is, you know, take a look at my market reports and see how well they're done. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, – end of year market reports very soon and they'll compare and contrast and I'll extrapolate the information I'll compare it to the year before to the year before see how the volume is see you know where the inventory is at see where the dollar per square foot's at and and people find that fascinating and for the person who who stirs that up and spits it all out perfectly for the reader they are so they only want to talk to you. So, I mean, and that's where my success is coming from is they all read my blog before they call me. So I would have to say all of my business comes from the blog. But interestingly enough, I don't get many email inquiries. Most people are like, they call me. They're like, I'm on your blog. I'm on your website right now. All the so serious what happened ones. is, yeah, what's happening is that they're going to the blog, they're reading about it, and um, they're already convinced that you know the information that they need you to know. So in essence, it's like if it's for sellers, it's like a phenomenal listing presentation online. For buyers, it is like uh, just a great source of he's the guy who knows the market. The other thing, which I think is just so um, attractive, the other thing that I do love about you, Kevin, is that you are not afraid to tell people what is really going on? I cannot tell you how many blogs that, you know, people are not really being, agents are not really being upfront about what's going on in the marketplace. And as you just said, look, Miami was the first to go down. It's been the first to come back up. And, you know, you're, you're very um, transparent about where the market is. And I know that when the market was having challenges, you, you say it like it is. And I do think that one of the things you've done just a phenomenal job of is having a strong voice and not being afraid to use it because, you know, I do think that there are other blogs out there that provide, you know, good market information. There's no doubt. However, your market information is obviously, uh, you take it to another level because you have a strong opinion. And you do have a strong opinion. You have a strong voice. You're not afraid to use it. And I would um, definitely say that uh, that's been a huge part of your success now in going back over the last six years okay because I think you know hindsight is always you know a great thing would you have done anything different with your blog <clears throat> would I have done anything different with my blog no I wouldn't know I, 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 I can't see you know, I'm so thankful that I was surrounded by, you know, I I had the 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 guidance of Ardell, and later on I had the guidance of you know Francis and and Lori Manny and Joe and everybody to go to that I didn't really make a mistake because I had such great 
and and let me put another plug in here. Active Rain, I think, is a phenomenal resource, and I think that if you're a blogger, as, as like you have this series here, but I also think people starting out should be in Active Rain. I think it's like you know training wheels. It's, I think it's a great resource, and not a lot, of, not enough people use it, in my opinion. So, um, <clears throat> no, there's nothing I would do differently. Uh, uh, no, no. I think it's all well, worked one of the out. Things that, one of the things that you talk about a lot, Kevin, is the people in your um, world who have been a great help to you. You talk about uh, from the beginning. Uh, you know, Lori Mann, H. Joe Farrar, both of them no longer with us, amazing people in the industry, irreplaceable. Um, they were a great source to you, as was Ardell, as was Fran. Also, the thing that I love about you is that you have been a great resource. You've been exactly like they have been, but for other people, because you've been really open about talking about your blog and, hey, here's what I do, here's how I do it, here's what's working, you know, here's my, you know, my strategy. And as you said earlier on the call, you have a very specific strategy with your blog, and it's very evident. Your strategy is I'm going to provide the best content that people cannot get other places so that my site is going to be a resource where people are going to want to come and hear my voice. And you have absolutely mastered it. I mean, I don't think that there's anyone that does it better. But what I love so much is that not only have you done a great job with your blog, but you're keeping the most important thing in focus. And the most important thing is your clients, those buyers and sellers out there that you're working with, and you've never forgotten that you are first and foremost a real estate agent. And I love it when you say, look, you know, I'm with my clients. I'm busy. I'm out there. You make no apologies for not, you know, having a post every Tuesday morning. You, you are very transparent about what you've done in your blog. And you are, for me, proof positive that blogging can transform an agent's business if they're serious about it and I think most importantly if like you they're willing to step up and have a voice and really let people know what's going on in the marketplace because I really believe that that's what people want to know they want to know why should I hire you why are you better than the next guy what do you know that's going to help me in my quest to buy a home or my quest to sell a home bottom line you know what is your competitive advantage and yours is pretty obvious and I believe that that is exactly why people don't even email you they're picking up the phone and just saying hey I'm on your blog let's talk because you you know there's something that I talk about a lot with my clients and I talk about trying to get your business to a point of attraction not promotion and your business is a business of attraction, Kevin. You can see that. It's not that you're, you know, promoting and, you know, uh, touting your own horn. You've got a great blog. That blog, the content of that blog, the voice of you in that blog is attracting people to pick up that to you, which then in turn translates into them picking up the phone and talking to you. So I think that that's really exciting. I am so thrilled and honored, I know Fran is as well, to – have had the opportunity this morning to, you know, to chat with you. Now, if you could have any closing thoughts or advice mm -hmm. for anybody out there that's thinking about mm -hmm. blogging, what would you love to tell them? Okay, great. This is the good part. Um, advice number one, when you get into this, it's very addicting to chat with other agents. You have to stay very mindful of how much time you are spending with agents and talking to agents about agent issues. Um, I got past that like my first six months, you know, way past 2007. I mean, you know, I like TLW just like everybody else, and I find her a hoot, and she likes me, but we can't spend all day talking to each other. We We all have to, you know, we all have to go to work. So a lot of agents think, and I've heard it so many times, and I just, to the point where I don't even counter it anymore, it's like, well, I could get a referral from somebody. Well, it's either I'm not as liked as you think I am, or there are no referrals out there because a lot of agents believe, well, I'm talking to this agent in Washington, and they could have a referral for me in Dayton. And, yeah, um, 
Dayton can get hit by a tsunami too. But that's a, the, the the likelihood is the same that the, they're going to have a referral for you that Dayton's going to get hit by a tsunami. So you know, don't waste your time. Wait, don't waste your time talking to too many agents. Watch it, and 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 you know, that's the biggest mistake I see agents making is. They're so busy talking to each other all the time. Save that for your conferences. Save that for your off time. Save that for one day a week. Save that. But you know, you've got to, You're a real. You're a real estate agent first. And um, yeah, that that that's my biggest, my best piece of advice. Well, you know, real estate is a business about making connections, and um, you have done uh, just an incredible job. Kevin, of connecting with your marketplace, connecting with buyers and sellers in your marketplace, bringing something that is, you know, honest to the marketplace, which is honest advice. And I call it the expert factor. If somebody feels that you're the expert and that you really know what you're talking about, it is very seductive to them. It's very attracting. They want to talk to you. And, you know, I always say the proof is in the results. And your results are phenomenal. I'm so proud of you for what you've done, you know, in blogging. You're a phenomenal agent, a great person, but what you've done is you've taken um, a, a, something new in real estate, you know, and you've taken it to a whole new level, and you have shown other agents that there is a way to um, do lead generation, um, you know, a new way, not just the good old-fashioned way. But the reality is, is that the blog gives you opportunities to connect with people. But you know what the interesting note to all that is there, and everybody sort of sort of um, ragged on, on Ardella a little bit when she picked me uh, as her apprentice, and they're like, "Oh, you just picked him because he was cute," and <clears throat> and she goes, "No, I picked him because he was a good agent, and the." The, a good agent is going to make a great blogger. So for she said, for you to be a good blogger, you have to be a good agent. Because I was already a seasoned agent at you know in 2007. I had been doing it for already 12 years. So I was already a good agent in my own right. And she said that's why she had picked me because you know she thought that that would be um, a, a good chance of success. So. I would well, you know, I I've, would credit our Dell for before. that. You know, Kevin, I've said this to a number of people when I talk about blogging, and people have asked me, who do you think does it the best? And, uh, you know, hands down, and I joke, and I say, well, the most beautiful person I know inside and, out, inside and out that blogs is Kevin. And I always send them to have a look at what you're doing because you do it better than uh, anyone else and well, just in, uh, just, emphasize, just emphasize the, the outside I'm in Miami I don't really care on the inside as long as I'm, I'm good looking on the outside that's all I care about well, it's a lot of work and a lot of money outside, but you thing. are also a sweetheart and very beautiful on the inside and I've had the uh, pleasure of being able to get to know you and that has just been um, you know one of the, the that's been my highlight uh, a real highlight for me of 2011, for sure, is the time that you and I have spent in person and, and uh, for sure, on the phone. It wasn't so that other I situation? To... <laughs> oh, yes, <laughs> that too. <laughs> so, you know, Kevin, I tell you, I am just so excited to see where blogging takes you in 2012, and I'm just, I know that you're really helping so many agents today by spending this time with us, and we're going to share it. Um, Fran and I are thrilled to have had you on this call today. And, uh, hey, just get out there and continue selling up Miami because you're doing one heck of a job with it. And I just want to thank you so much for joining us today. You ladies are the best. Thank you so much for even considering me. I'm like, when I heard when I heard the title of this, I'm like, what are, what are, what are they drinking? So, but, hey, I'll take it. Hey, happy holidays. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Kevin, so, so Thank much. you. Thanks, Denise. Thanks, friend.